Hello YouTube. Yeah, I haven't shaved. It's uh, Sunday morning and I'm back from the boot sale. But it's been really crap this week, I've got to say. Um, I've been to two, my local one, and then I went into Hull and I uh, trod around their dusty little fairground. Um, yeah, I got a few DVD players, uh, some video games, and that's about it. A couple of, uh, well, one very old Sony Digicam. Um, get that in there, like that. Cyber shot. Um, I bought this because it's got memory card. But yeah, it's not been a big day. So, um, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do and do the recap of my sales in January and February. Just, just the top ones that I found interesting. I'm not going to be showing you everything. And I'm not going to show you any video games, books, DVD box sets, things like that. They're bread and butter. Everybody knows you can make a few quid on each one. Um, and a few, a few a day always helps, but it's not interesting. So I will show you a selection of my interesting stuff and uh, it'll be a screen grab. Without further ado, we shall do that now. I think there's about 24, 25 separate items. Some of them are lumped together. Sales from January and February in one go. And my explanations for why and what I was selling and um, what I think about them. I actually sold three of these to one guy uh, together. It came to about £18 with discounts. And um, I was pleased with that. And then later on, about a week later, I sold another two. These came from a job lot from an auction. I bought um, a big box full of magazines, which uh, nobody else wanted. Um, and I think I paid £5 plus commission because nobody wanted them. Um, actually, it could have been £5 including commission. And in the top of them were a lot of horse and hounds, which were like 1970s, 1980s, which I tried to sell, and there was no going on them. They're mostly um, a social magazine. This one, Practical Woodworking, and there was Practical uh, Householder, and a couple of car ones. The, 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 the adverts are really sort of retro, obviously, because it's like 60s, early 70s. Um, and there's some projects in there that people still find interesting and, and maybe possibly do today. They owe me nothing. The, the, the best out of the box that I had was um, slot car racing magazines from the late 50s all the way through the 60s and some from the early 70s. They weren't um, uh, full runs. They were just like odd here and there, odd months here and there. But I was lumping six together and getting maybe like thirty pounds. Um, I think I probably had a hundred and fifty quid's worth of those out of that box. Anyway, so these owe me nothing. I've only probably got half a dozen left. On to the next one. Um, wireless energy monitor. Owl is probably the most widely known, but um, it cost me twenty nine ninety nine. Sorry, it cost me £3 and I sold it for £29.99. By the way, all these prices for hard goods, postage is on top. I'll just make that point out. Media, most of the time, it's free, post. And for the hard goods, it's sent by track courier, postage on top. Next one, Sonic the Hedgehog. This is to prove I make failures, everybody makes failures and... You haven't got to be upset by them. Um, you just uh, you wipe your feet, you move on, and you learn your lesson. This I found in a charity shop, and the staff were playing with it. it I got a bit taken with it because it was quite fun. Um, uh, but I paid a tenner for it. Without looking it up, this particular charity shop has a really bad... Uh, sort of black zone for uh, signal... So I didn't bother looking it up. Um, 
yeah, I paid a tenner. I'd only got 13 down to five. They're selling for about £20 in retail shops. So I was pretty lucky to get 13 95 with postage on top. That's uh, someone trying to contact me. I'll leave them for a minute. Right, here we go. This is what the uh, we're talking about, though. Parts are not working. You haven't got to be afraid of something. If you pick it up at a car boot sale and it doesn't work, just offer accordingly. Um, and if somebody says, oh, it definitely works, if you think it's not going to work, give a price where you can still make money if it doesn't work. Now, this had a battery on. And if you've watched my other videos, you know my feelings on uh, original batteries. I won't go into it over and over again. But there's something to sell if, say, the whole thing doesn't work. Anyway, it was untested due to brain batteries and no means to recharge. So it was nice cosmetic condition and I sold it for £26. Parts not working. Now, I don't know whether somebody could get it working again or not. If it wasn't going to sell like that, I would have taken the battery out and sold that separately. This was a nice sale. Um, I paid... Well, I, I picked this up in a, car, in a charity shop and... They wanted a fiver for it, but it didn't have a power supply. And I took it to the desk and I said, um, do you have the power supply with it? Because maybe you're keeping it under the counter. And she says, oh, no, it doesn't come with a power supply. And I said, it does, you know, there's a hole here. You have to plug the power supply in. Um, the clock itself is one of those single AA batteries clocks. It's just a standard clock and it's a plastic background. Um, and a glass front is quite well made in that you can take it apart and clean it, which is what I did. It was quite dirty. The, the face was dirty. The glass was dirty. But the clock was working. Um, but it didn't have a power supply. So she said, well, what, would you like it for £3? And I said, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, I put my own supply on. Um, I buy these suppliers anytime you can see them for 50 pence or a pound well a pound might be too much to invest when you've got a big box full of them um, I've I've got a box full of wires and a box full of power supplies and whenever they're really cheap like I bought a carry bag full for, from a guy for five or six pounds a couple of years ago and I've still got loads of them um, so I added my own power supply in which was the about the right um, power. I think it was 700 milliamp, 800 milliamp, something like that. And it was meant to be a 12 volt, one amp supply. So that was close enough and it lit up the neons. Anyway, the guy who bought it um, said, would, would, it, would it be all right if I came and collected it rather than pay 7.99 and get it broken on the way? Because obviously it was uh, fragile neon on the outside. So I said, yeah, that's fine. It saves me on a lot of packaging and bubble wrap and everything. So rather than pay 7 99 he came round because he lived in a local area. Uh, he lived about 30 miles away, but he wasn't going to risk the uh, the delivery, which is fine. Um, and he said to me on the doorstep, he said, oh, I don't actually want the clock itself. It's the neons. Mine are broken on my Harley Davidson clock. Oh, OK. Will the blue go with it? Because, like, I've seen those Harley Davidson clocks. It's the same design, style, clock, but they have Harley Davidson printed on the back. He says, oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, and he was going to take it all apart and take the neons off it and put them on his own. So, anyway, it gave me a glowing feedback, so I was happy with that. Um, and, obviously, I was happy with not taking the risk of having it broken in the mail. Um, if you've seen my uh, beginning of the year recap about uh, Q4 and making more money, you'll know I didn't pay a great deal for this. I got £140. I, I reduced it from £150 and sold it for £140. I was very happy with that because it cost me 15 for this mini disc hi fi. Mini disc is the, the uh, important thing here. Um, you can buy this hi-fi or very similar without the mini disc in with a CD 
in the bottom, radio, tape cassette in the front, and um, it goes for like £45. Um, but yeah, this one with the mini disc there um, went for a lot more. So yeah, the higher the price normally, the better the margin. So that's why I'm looking for the higher priced items now. Rather than all the small five pound items, I've still got plenty of those. Here's another example of a higher priced item, not quite as high. Um, I found this in a charity shop uh, in Selby, I believe. And I think this was a fiver. Um, new world stock. Well, I put that now. Actually, I had to repair the key. I wasn't going to take it back because it's a Microsoft Naturally Elite Ergonomic Keyboard. Um, it was probably worth just it for the spares, the spare buttons, you know what I mean? Um, very similar to the clicky buttons. Um, the straight one's called a clicky keyboard and they go for $100. Well, that's $100, near enough. Um, anyway, this button, uh, can I show you there? This button here, in the middle, it's got one switch on, not two. You'd think there'd be one at each end, so that your thumb would just kick on it. And it isn't. There's a sort of spring clip underneath that's meant to touch the spring, the, the, the switch as well, or, or push, so that anywhere it, you push on the button, it clicks the switch. Well, it's a design flaw, and it doesn't do it very well. Anyway, I took it apart and I bent the spring like it said it had to do it on Reddit, <laughs> believe it or not. Because um, the people had complained about it as, as a design flaw and what best to do about it. So I fixed that and it worked from both sides when I sent it out. Um, but I still sold it as brand new. And I think that's fair because it hadn't been used. It was absolutely spotless. Um and it was working fine when I, when I sent it. So, yeah, 5 to 65. Took me an hour to fix. Not a problem. Um, here's a good example of something that you can find all over the place at car boots and charity shops. People just hand them in to them. Um, I think I paid £3 for this one. One thing I've got to say is uh, take it in a dim light because then the LEDs stand out. Because if you have it under uh, the lights that you'd need to take a really bright photograph um, and nice detail like this, it's not going to be as bright as that. That was under a dimmer light and then the lighting has been improved post, um, at post time in the eBay app to make it brighter. You know, um, but I did put that in the description. Um, displays all working correctly. The first few photos are in subdued lighting, just like a bedroom at night, to better show off the LEDs. So I wasn't deceiving anyone. It's in the description, and obviously anybody reading it should should read it. Buying that. Um, if you've seen me Instagram, you've seen this, and yeah, got some good money for it. Um, it wasn't working. The guy wanted 20 quid at the car boot sale once he'd uh, had a look around it. He was a bit unsure about the price and he was, after the, uh, he agreed on 20 pounds and I said I'd take it. He threw a load of stuff in. Um, he threw in, um, let me see, a Commodore 64 power supply, a Commodore 64 joystick, Commodore 64 data cassette, and uh, something else of hardware. Anyway, I sold three of them um, before I actually got around to selling this because I was waiting for, for some fuses. I wanted to test whether I could get it working again. It had a blown fuse in it. It wouldn't turn on, so I ordered some fuses. In the meantime, I sold the, the extra parts. Um, anyway, when it came back, the fuses didn't work. 
I mean, the fuses worked fine till he put it in this, and then it blew them. So I saw that as spares and repairs. Um, working, fully working, I would have probably got maybe another 30, 40 pounds. But I was very happy with that from 20 pounds, plus all the extra little bits. I'd already got me 20 quid back. Um, anyway, a fortnight later, the guy uh, caught up with me at the car boot and gave me a load of video games. Uh, not give, computer games, not video games, that actually I can show you now because I've already sold some of them. Um, yeah, I should have actually had these lumped together with it. There was Frogger. Didn't get a lot for that. Um, and with it being media, it was free post. So we're talking about, uh, I don't know, maybe 75 pence for me there. Um, then there was... Two Hungry Horus games, but that was better, $9.95. Um, so there's like a pound fifteen postage, um, a pound fifteen fees. So that leaves seven for me, which is all profit. And not that one. This one, $12.99. Weetabix versus the Titches, which was given away with Weetabix. And you could decide which computer you wanted it for. There was actually a Spectrum version, a Commodore 64 version. Well, if you look it up on eBay, you'll see the different versions. I think there was a few, like one for an Amiga. Um, anyway, at that price, and 150 postage, and... Um, the fees of about about two quid or so. It came to about nine pound profit on that one. So, yeah, those are all basically on top of that. So it was a good buy in the end. Right back to ten pound for a battery out of a camera that didn't work. I've said to you a number of times if you've been watching my videos that. This is the case. I nicked this uh, this listing from somebody else. I didn't type any of this. I just copied it off somebody else. Um, I typed this bit. Condition used but test didn't work in. Uh, the actual battery worked fine. I charged up the battery um, with a charging cable. The actual camera that it came out of had a big splodge in the LCD on the back. He probably took lovely photos, but you're not going to be able to sell it. So um, that just goes in my pile to sell as non-working. Every year, as at least once a year, I have a big pile of old digital cameras that I just sell as non-working. Um, like 20 or 30 of them. Start them off at £15 and they sell. Um, and sometimes they get good money for them. If there's like ones that people want. They're all specified as not working, no batteries, no no memory cards, but I still sell them without any trouble. Anyway, this one got me more than I paid for the camera and battery together. It's only a small profit, but it's there. Right, here's, here's one example of not being afraid of buying something you look that looks as though it's not working. I actually um, took this pan, cleaned it because it was really dirty. Um, it was um, part of a job lot I got for about a tenner, with about eight or nine pieces in, and I allocated two pounds out of the ten pounds to this. Some of the items were like one pound items, and some were like 50 pence items. So this came out a two pound item, and it was um, really dirty, but when I plugged it in with the cables off my own GameCube, worked fine. Um, so I took it apart, cleaned it, put it back together again, and just t sold it as discoloured, working with nothing else, just the just the cube. And I got um, £26.50, plus postage on top, so basically uh, just over £30. Um, uh, also at the end, beginning of the year, I was saying about clearing out my old stock of things like 
tools and hardware that I was used to sell new stock um, before I got into selling reselling so here's a good example um, this is the first auction of a few auctions I've already done and I got the best money actually 25 pounds I started off for a fiver as you can see there's quite a lot of gear there that's the main photo and then there's some close-ups of all the gear most of this gear I'd been selling at car boots over the last four or five years um, and it was all like 20 pence items except for these diamond core drills that are cutting through you can use them to cut through the bottom, bottom of the glass bottles or um, tiling in your bathroom if you want to like put a drill hole through to hang something um, or you can cut uh, holes in mirrors for mounting screws any type of glass or ceramic these are ideal for that and there was quite a lot of them so those are probably where a lot of the money the 25 pound came from actually as I put 60 pound retail there about 60 pound I think these cost me in the region of about one pound sixty each these cost me about a pound each these little long nose pliers so actually when you look at it there was probably 25 quids worth when I bought it wholesale maybe a bit more um, but I'd had my money's worth out of all of them and it had got to the point where I was selling all these screwdrivers and little drills and sticky on things for 25 pence 20 pence at the car boots so to get 25 pounds for them I was very happy and um, they went two, two kilos packed so they went Royal Mail um, for three pounds 20 I believe uh, but I charged 395 on top um, this is nice I didn't actually get 95 for it I got 80 pound on an offer so yeah there's a four to five millimeter wide chip and because of that I got this for five pounds instead of I don't know maybe 20 maybe 30 in a, in a charity shop I couldn't really tell you um, it was either brand new or maybe used once uh, that by the way that mark in there <laughs> is where I'd washed it <laughs> and it was still evaporating off um, yeah it's in really good nick and believe it or not these are on the website um, for about 230 pounds I don't think anybody actually pays 230 pounds I think wait, people wait for them to be in, in the sale um, from the cruiser and pay sale prices this is another one that I was pleased with we're into February now um, this cost me eight pounds that's the 7.99 there it actually cost more than that because I bought the remote as well but I paid eight pounds to the person at the car boot for the actual combi and it, um, it wasn't in nice nick like this it was scratched and dirty and I just cleaned it up it wasn't a problem um, all worked perfectly but I didn't know that until I'd bought the remote you can't get all the functionality of the item without the remote so I paid my £10.95 I think it was it might have been £10.79 it was definitely over £10 for the remote and it came within a few days um, everything worked perfectly including all the uh, the audio dubbing and the dubbing from one side to the other you can't what you can't do with these is record on both of them at once you can record on one you can record on the other or you can record from one to the other but the beauty of this one is you can record from the VCR to the DVD or the other way around most of them will only do from the DVD to the VCR but this is a DVD rewritable so it does actually record from a VCR to a DVD and that was yeah so I got 107.99 plus postage on top 
uh, and I charged. It's a heavy beast, this. I think I charged 12 pound. I'm not exactly certain, but it was, it was, it was heavy. Oh, brand new with tags. Oh yeah, this is a perfect example of why people come to eBay. They want to bargain. So I gave him it. Uh, RRP, £19.50. These were all brand new with tags. He got it for £8.99 and delivered. And you might say, what the bloody hell are you doing selling a 20 quid tire for £8.99 and delivered? Well, I'm, I'm really just trying to get rid of them. I have so many. Um, they came to me in an auction. I paid £33 plus commission. For 75 of them. Um, and they're all um, mostly 100% silk. I won't say all of them actually. There's a few that aren't. Um, and they're from um, a rep. They're mostly production samples. And some of them don't even have the Mike, uh, Max and Spencer's um, tags in them yet. But they're all Marks and Spencers. The ones with the, with the, um, cards and the tags, um, were all, as you can see, they've got the actual 100% and Marks and Spencer autograph. They're just production samples. Um, but yeah, there was like 75 of them in this auction. So I didn't pay much at all. I think it was £38 including commission. Which is uh, about 50 pence each. So, Boots Vintage Brown Plastic Photographic Slide Case. Next, £15 plus postage on top is what I actually got. I was advertising it at 17.95, but I got £15. Um, 100 slides. Well, the case had 100 spaces for 100 slides, and actually there was 195 slides stuffed into it. Um, this is a perfect case of the slides being worth more than the box. Um, there's the found media craze I've talked about before. This is to show you that people actually do pay for those. Um, I have put, I'm no expert legally, you need to check into the copyright, but I think I, as you will own the positives, normally the only copy Probably the image rights. Huggaboo, no, Huggaroo, microwave heat pad. Um, these are actually quite popular. They're about £30 new. I was surprised to get that, but it was brand new and sealed. I did actually have two packs. One was um, the scented version, and one was the um, unscented. This is the unscented. I got 20 quid plus postage. Retail price is thirty two ninety nine. Uh, the box was a little bit uh, pushed in, but I thought if anybody wants to save themselves five or six quid, because of course I was charging postage on top, so it's only uh, five or six quid saving, uh, maybe eight. Yeah, about eight. Um, they'll be saving some money. The unscented was more. It's uh, the same price as the scented, but I couldn't get as much for the scented. Don't, they're not as popular. I think I paid, I got £16.99. Right, um, Sky Q, £75. I've actually had a lot more than this in the past, and maybe I should have held out for this more. Um, I put this on at 95 and somebody sent me an offer within a few hours. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I'll take it. And the reason I took it, because this cost me £1.30. Well, actually, no. The box and the electrics cost me £1.30. The remote was 6 99 I actually had the remote in stock because the previous one I sold, um, I'd ordered one. And then I'd found the, the remote... I found another remote that I already had that was in a box 
which matched it. So I sold it with the with the old remote. So this new remote was six ninety nine, but I'd already had it in stock, and I knew that when I bought them. I got two of these, um, and uh, um, if anybody knows the numbers, DRX five nine five, which is a, a mini room box for the old style Sky, which I still sell and they sell really well. Um, it turned out the the second one was actually not um, an EM one fifty. It was the um, they look exactly the same from the top. It was just the um, the Wi-Fi hub that this needs. Um, anyway, I've sold that separately, but I only got like a tenner for that. So anyway, somebody offered me seventy-five. I knew that this had cost me about eight pound between them, so I just took it. I wasn't going to argue. Quite honestly, I wasn't going to hold out for like another ten pound or anything. I just took the money. Um, it was a quick flip, very easy, and very light. These things, so they go for under a kilo, I think. Uh, so it's, we're talking about three pound odd. Took some nice photographs. It didn't take long. Um, if you've seen me uh, videos from a couple of weeks ago, you'll see I took, I bought a couple of these for a pound each, and this was the first to sell eight pound plus postage and the other one sold for six pound plus postage i paid a pound each for them but i didn't do anything other than take a couple of photos uh, there you go and do a write-up took all of 10 minutes so again just because of the condition it it's all about the fact that it was a dinky toy condition really doesn't matter anymore there's plenty of people will do a renovation on it um, you know, repaint it in the proper colours and everything. And this is the last of the interesting ones from February. Forty two ninety five in the end is what I got. I started this at sixty quid. Um I didn't think I'd ever get sixty quid. I was starting it high so that I could send offers out. And that's what I did. And sent offers out, sent offers out reduced it sent some more offers out reduced it sent some more offers out eventually somebody somebody uh, bit and i got 42.95 plus postage on top um cost me a fiver um had to buy the bulb bulb was i believe i got like six of them for 12 pounds something like that it might have been five for twelve pound delivered, so we're looking at maybe two pound odd. So let's look at it seven fifty. Call it seven fifty um, into forty forty three pounds. Yeah, pleased with that. Um, I'm not going to shy away from any of this sort of thing. Um, I got a lava lamp uh, from the same place actually about a fortnight later, and that sold really well as well and quickly. Um, I think I've, this one maybe took a month to sell. The lava lamp took about an hour and a half. Um, if you've been on my Instagram, um, it's the it's one of the reels. If you haven't been on my Instagram, the link will be in the description below for this video. And have a look um, for this, um, not this particular one, the, the blue uh, lava lamp that I got. It's blue metallic. And I put the Barbarella theme over it because, if you remember, there was a Mathmos in uh, Barbarella, the film. Um, and yeah, it went well. So, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm not making any big conclusion about what you should do or any of that. I just thought you might be interested. So, um, I've also got another video coming out. Uh, in the next day or so, uh, it's really short because it's just pickups from Sunday, which was yesterday now. Um, if it's not, if you're watching this live when it goes out, it'll be on in a couple of days. So like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and you will find 
that um, you'll get a notification when I publish it. Right, thanks for that. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the week. Goodbye.